The law will go out from Zion, the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He will judge between many nations and will settle disputes for strong nations far and wide. They will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war anymore. Everyone will sit under their own vine and under their own fig tree, and no one will make them afraid. For the Lord Almighty has spoken. Welcome to St Andrew's Cathedral in Sydney on Anzac Day 2020. Since 1916, Anzac Day commemorations have taken place on the 25th of April, marking the day in 1915 when Australian and New Zealand forces landed on Gallipoli in the first major engagement of the war. Nearly 9,000 Australians and nearly 3,000 New Zealanders would lose their lives in Gallipoli before the campaign ended in withdrawal at the end of the year. Annual commemorations of Anzac Day usually involve a parade down Elizabeth Street, although until very recently the parade marched down George Street past the cathedral, where the War Widows Guild has established a field of remembrance for most of the last 70 years. And then the service of remembrance in the Hyde Park War Memorial. And in every capital city and in many towns across Australia and in many suburbs, the scene is repeated as local RSL branches conduct an Anzac commemoration. The dawn service at Gallipoli itself has been attended by thousands in recent years. But this year, because of the coronavirus, none of this is happening. But we are determined not to forget. On Anzac Day in particular, Australians remember. We give thanks to God for men and women who gave themselves at home and abroad in defence of Australia. We honour them and we remember the cost at which our freedom has been purchased and protected. Usually, as this year, Anzac follows Easter. So today too, Christians proclaim that Christ is risen, that death is defeated, and that Jesus is Lord and Judge of all, and he will bring peace to the nations when he establishes his forever kingdom, where there will be no more war or crying or dying. So today we give heartfelt thanks for the fallen. We pray for peace, and we pray too to Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Your kingdom come. A prayer in commemoration of the fallen. O Lord, lover of souls, who through the mouth of your prophet of old has declared that all souls are yours, we thank you for the brave and faithful dead who have laid down their lives in war, for the devotion and courage of those who have fallen in the cause of freedom. Grant us so to follow their good example in faithfulness and endurance, even unto death, that we may be found worthy of the crown of everlasting life, through the merits of Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. And a prayer for the peace of the world. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we pray that you would turn to yourself the hearts of all peoples and the rulers of the nations, that by the power of the Holy Spirit, peace may be established among the nations on the foundation of justice, righteousness and truth. Through him who was lifted up on the cross to draw all people to himself, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The choir will sing the ode and will hear the last post and after a moment's silence, the rouse.
lest we forget. Psalm 46 says, God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her, she will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar, kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice, the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done, the desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. We're in an extraordinary time with such protective measures that's really closing down most of, of our world today. And, and it's even restricting what is one of our most important national events, uh, which is Anzac Day. And I think back to what it must have been like for Australians in World War I. You can think back, there was five million Australians at the time, 62,000 of them were killed, 150,000 of them were wounded, 400,000 returned from war. So 
about one in three households were affected by the war directly. And when those circumstances, they, they, they shout out things that they did then and they shout out today to us. We have to cling to those truths that Christ died for us, that he demonstrates his love for us. God does in that Christ died for us. And I know we know that, but clinging to that can be a difficult thing to do in these circumstances. And it's, a, it's a been a very big year for the Australian Defence Force. We've had a whole raft of things happen in fairly recent times. We had the bushfires with our support to that. We've had floods. We've had uh, aid sent to Vanuatu and to Fiji. And we're in operations around the globe. And, and now we're in the midst of this coronavirus uh, issue. And so on this Anzac Day, would you pray for your Defence Force? Would you pray that they would discharge their duties with diligence and dedication? Would you pray that they would be courageous and compassionate, that they would bring justice and peace and hope as they discharge their duties, and that they would come to Jesus as ones who were weary and heavy laden, that they would find their rest, rest for their souls, as they contemplate Jesus as their Lord and Saviour when they're thinking about eternity. And pray for those who've been affected by war. Pray that our Heavenly Father would heal the wounded, would bind the brokenhearted, and would comfort the suffering. Pray for our leaders too, both in the Defence Force and our political leaders, that they'd make wise decisions as we face these very uncertain times. Thank the Lord for their good decisions, for the way that they have handled the coronavirus crisis, and pray that they would be kind and considerate as well as prudent and practical as they go through the months and the weeks ahead. Pray for God to be glorified this answer day too. Amen.
Let's pray together. For those who grieve, comfort, merciful Lord, all those who are mourning the loss of loved ones who laid down their lives in war in recent times or many years ago. Be with them in their sorrow, support them in their grief. May our gratitude for the sacrifice of their loved ones be expressed in honour, encouragement and care in accordance with their needs. Give them faith to know that neither life nor death can separate us from your love for all of us in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. For those scarred by war. Gracious Father, we remember how your son had great compassion for those who suffered. Hear our prayer for those who continue to suffer as a result of war, for those who live with the pain and scars of bodily injury, for those whose minds are shattered, for those who have lost the companionship of friends and for those who have lost hope. Grant to them peace of mind and heart, relieve them from all their suffering and turn their tears to joy through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. For those who serve in the Defence Forces, O oh Lord our God, we commend to your gracious care and keeping the men and women of the Australian Defence Forces. Protect them, we pray, from all dangers to body and soul. Give them a loyal, courageous and disciplined spirit. Instill in them the love of justice and liberty and grant that they may be called to serve only for the maintenance of order and peace throughout the world. We ask it in the name of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. A prayer for those in authority. Ruler of the nations, whose will it is to restore all things in your beloved Son, Jesus, the King of all, govern the hearts and minds of those in authority and bring the families of the earth, divided and torn apart by the ravages of sin, to be subject to his just and gentle rule, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen.